Hi everyone, Tiffany Tillman here with another edition of Q&A Wednesday, a weekly feature at simplytiffanystudios.com dedicated to answering your digital scrapbooking questions. This week's question was sent in by Beth and Beth asks, Tiffany, my digital scrapbooking skills have gotten better since I started a few years ago, but my shadowing isn't up to par. I see lots of layouts with elements that look three dimensional, but whenever I add shadows, they look flat. What am I doing wrong? Can you give me some tips on how I can make my shadows pop using Photoshop elements? Well, Beth, I'm glad you asked because today we're going to focus on what I call realistic shadowing. I'm going to share my design tips for shadowing using Photoshop elements specifically. All right, let's get started. The key to shadow work is to make it look realistic and dimensional. Now the candor preset shadowing styles and elements usually don't cut it. I mean, they're good starting points, but you're limited in control options to just size, distance, and opacity. And, and that's cool, but granddaddy Photoshop over here allows in-depth shadow work from setting different angles to changing a shadow's blend mode, which is quite effective, and so much more. All of that combined allows for more realistic shadowing effects on pages created with Photoshop. So what's a Photoshop Elements user to do? Well, I'm going to tell you and hang on to your hats, folks. Here we go. First, create dedicated shadowing layers for your most important eye catching layers. Buttons, staples, they don't really need dedicated layers. They don't need all the work, but flowers or twisty ribbons do need dedicated layers. I can't stress that enough. So grab an element of flower or a leaf, add it to your layout and duplicate that layer in the layers panel. Toggle off the visibility of the top element layer. We don't need to see it right now. Then click on the create new fill or adjustment layer icon in the layers panel. Select hue saturation from the drop down listing and a new adjustment layer will appear over your elements layer. Then create a clipping mask or group from the adjustment layer to the element layer. And there are a few ways to do that for beginners. Simply go to layer in the top menu and then create clipping mask. With the adjustment panel open, drag the lightness slider to the left, but not completely to negative 100. Choose a value that darkens the element. I usually stop around negative 80 but this value will vary depending on the element you've chosen. The idea here is just to get it slightly dark. Next, adjust the hue slider so the element appears slightly brown. Okay, why? Why are we doing all this? Well, think about it. No shadow is completely 100% pure black. Shadows have a shade to them, a color that might be brown or closer to a dark gray depending on the environment but it's never completely blacked out. So using the adjustment panel here gives you options, options. You don't have behind the scenes in the element style setting menu. And that folks is why we're here. So if I were to turn on the visibility of my main element and move my shadowing layer ever so slightly, I would have a very sharp and harsh shadow. But at the very least, I have a dedicated shadowing layer that ooh, cha, I can play with. So here are a few more tricks. First, merge the adjustment layer and the element layer together. That will make things easier for our next set of steps. So you can target both layers in the layers panel, hold down the shift key to select them both, and use shortcut key command E on the Mac or control E on the PC. 
from here, we can tone down the sharp edges of our shadowing layer. And we'll do that by adding a Gaussian blur. So go to Filter, Blur, and then select Gaussian Blur from the flyout. My Gaussian blurs are typically between 9 and 15. 9 if the object is closer to the background, and 15 if I want the element to look like it's popped more off the page. You can certainly choose a number according to your salt and pepper taste. Once you're done, click OK, and we have ourselves finally a pretty decent looking shadow. From here, you can use your mouse or arrow keys on the keyboard to offset the shadow. You can play with the opacity slider and tone down the piece to make the shadow appear weaker and further away from the page, or leave it as is so it appears stronger and closer to the background. And you can introduce a blending mode like Linear Burn, which will vary your shadow's intensity based on the colors underneath the shadow's layer. <laughs> and that's a technical way of saying it's the best blending mode for drop shadows known to man. All right, so why go to all the trouble of going the long way around for shadowing? Well, my method creates a dedicated shadowing layer so you can play, you can fluff, and you can adjust your shadow to your heart's content. You no longer have to worry about the angle of your shadows because in elements, all objects have to share the same lighting angle. With my method, you can move your shadow all around anywhere you want, 360 degrees. You can now modify your shadow using blend modes, something Photoshoppers do all the time. And because you can tailor fit your shadow to the element, it just looks a hell of a lot better than the shadowing presets. Now Beth, that's the A to your Q. All right, if you found this video to be helpful, please share it with a scrappy friend or two on Facebook or Twitter or your favorite social hangout. And feel free to share your favorite shadowing tips in the comments below. And if you're in need for more great digital scrapbooking tips, techniques, and tutorials using Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, join me over at ReneePearson.com for my newest class, The Brush Shop. If you have a question you'd like to see answered here on Simply Tiffany's Q&A Wednesday, just click on the submit a question link and use the handy form. Remember, if your question is chosen, I'll send you a $10 gift certificate good for any product at my Design House Digital store. Beth just picked up hers. All right, girls, until next Wednesday's Q&A, happy scrapbooking.